Welcome to my LoRa training tutorial. This one is a biggie. I ran into multiple errors while trying to retrain an EJ style LoRa, and I was forced to learn a ton about how Koya actually works and all the things you should and shouldn't do so that your LoRas actually get trained correctly. So there's a lot in this tutorial. There's a lot of back and forth and a lot of trial and error. I did go in and try to explain what I did wrong at every point and how to actually do it correctly. If you wanna skip all of that and just see the final training parameters that I used, you can skip towards the end of the tutorial. I'll have chapters to make sure that it's easy to scan. But what we're gonna go over today is installing Koya SS, how to use it to train LoRa models, what are the best parameters to train those models, and there's a bunch of hidden gems in there of like, oh, don't do this, or why I did that, is this one got messy. I shot it over several days. It's a little bit complicated. I'm still learning as I go, so I hope that this is helpful. As a teaser, here's some of my favorite generations that I created using this EJ style LoRa. I'm gonna teach you how to make your own, how to create a LoRa for any style or any character that you wanna use. So let's dive in. A while back, I took EJ's character style that he does and trained the LoRa so I could create my own characters in that style. Here's an example of the type of characters that EJ does. They're all 3D, heavily stylized, very happy, kind of like walking around all the time. I took some of these pictures and trained my own model and I got these results. And as you can see, I have different types of characters and they're all created within that same EJ style. So what is a LoRa? Alora is a mini model that you can train and inject into whatever model you're using in Stable Diffusion. They're a lot lighter weight and you can either download them from online or you can train your own. Let's take a look at Civit AI so that you can see some examples of LoRa's you can download. So we're on Civit AI and here you have different checkpoints for style that you can download and for different characters. What we're going to do is come to the filter and instead of checkpoint like I have right now, we're going to select LoRa and I'll unselect checkpoint. And now here you're going to see all the different LoRa styles that I could download. Of course, this is the internet, so there's a lot of different things. Be careful what you end up downloading. Here's some examples of the different LoRas that we looked at. The Cyber Helmet, these are some of the results that it gets. And then scrolling down, you'll also have community photos with the prompts that they use to get that specific photo. Here's the Jack Sparrow one. Obviously they've trained it on Jack Sparrow and then they've used also different different anime models to make sure so that it looks cartoony. Arcane style Laura obviously trained on the arcane characters and down here you'll see how some people put that to use in their own creations. The Akira bike Laura and what that created, either it'd be realistic or a little bit more stylized. The ink scenery, this one I think is super cool. So basically it gives this style, this. This is heavily stylized and looks super cool. Here's some examples of how people have put it to use. The cool thing about LoRa's is that you're not limited to just using one. So you can use multiple LoRa's. You can train on pieces of clothing and then combine that with a character LoRa, or you can train a style LoRa and a character LoRa, and you can combine them either into their own prompt, or you can combine both of those LoRa's together to have a combined LoRa of both those things. It sounds like a lot, it's complicated, I'll take it step by step. First, let me show you some examples of the creations that I made. These are some of the selects that I got from all the characters that I generated. Some of them are a little bit less than perfect, but they still keep in within that consistent style of the big googly eyes. This one I guess has either four eyes or might have some nipples in there. This one's missing some eyeballs, but here are some of my favorites. The little tofu or marsh the marshmallow man, the tofu, the tofu guy, all of these like are really cool for me. So what we're gonna go over in today's tutorial is how we're going to install the tool to train our own LoRa's, what are the best settings to train our LoRa, and how to create multiple iterations of our character like I had, where I went from one prompt to a whole list of prompts with ChatGPT saying I wanted different types of food as characters in the style of iDesign. One thing I do wanna take some time to talk about is the ethics of all of this. AI is a super powerful tool and we're all aware of how dangerous it can be to artists and their work. So if you are going to train your own LoRa's, make sure that you have consent first. I checked in with EJ before I created my LoRa and before I created this video to teach people how to do it. Because for some artists, it can feel like you're taking their essence when you copy their style. 
there are a lot of LoRa's out there on Civit AI that aren't ethically sourced and you might not want to be using them. Try to make sure that you use this technology and all this information in an ethical way. Always ask artists for consent before copying their style. All right, to install Koya, I'm going to choose a location on my hard drive. I made a new folder called Brand New Koya. In here, I'm gonna type CMD to get a command window. And then once this is pulled up, I'm gonna run the installation commands. So copy this, paste it in here, enter. You'll see that now I have a new folder in here, Koya underscore SS, that has everything that I need to run the program. The installation is asking us to go into that folder, so that's what CD does, uh, and then also run setup bat. When you run that, the first thing it's going to say that you should use 3.10.9, but I'm using 3.10.6. The setup, it's going to ask you some questions. Do you want to uninstall previous versions of Torch and associated files before installing? I'm going to click no, since it says recommended for most. Please choose the version of Torch that you want to install. Take the recommended one. Once that's done, it'll ask you a series of questions. The first question is, what computer are you using for this environment? Always going to choose this machine. Then it's going to ask you what type of machine. You choose no distributed training. Do you want to run your training on CPU only? The answer to that is no. And it is actually highlighted right here. The one that's all caps is the default one. So you click no. Do you wish to optimize your script with Torch? In this case, we're also going to say no. And you just go through these typing what it recommends. Do you want to use de deep speed? No. What GPUs you do you want to use? Here we're going to type all. In my case, I have a 3090 and a 2070 Super, so hopefully I get to use both of those. This question is a little bit tricky, and I've done quite a, bit, a little bit of research on what it means. From what I can gather, if you have a Series 3000 or 4000, you could choose BF16 here, and if not, you should just use FP16, which seems to be the default. But I'm going to choose BF16, and if it doesn't go well for me, then I'll come back, reinstall, and use FP. Now that that's done, I'm going to continue with the installation process. The next step is optional, and this is also if you have a, an NVIDIA series 3000 or 4000, but I do recommend that you do it since it does increase the speed. So what you're going to do is download your CUDNN here, and I'm going to extract this directly into my Koya SS folder. Once I've done that, it wants me to run these commands in my command window. Great, and now it's installed. Next step is upgrading, in which case we're gonna do a git pull just to make sure that we have the latest, but we should since we just installed it. This serves to activate, but you can see that I already have venv over here, which is my environment in brackets. So I don't really need to copy this command, just so you see, if I copy paste that here, it's all the same. And now we run the upgrade, that installs all the dependencies, and then we're ready to launch Koya. Come back to our folder, and now we can just run GUI.bat. And once you launch it, you're going to find this is Koya. It should look pretty familiar. It looks very similar to Automatic 11.11. Some of the things that you can do with it is train a Dream Booth, Dream Booth LoRa. I've never tried Dream Booth TI. Fine tune, I think, is to update and combine different LoRas. And then you have the Utilities tab. We're going to use Dream Booth LoRa. So I'll break down what all these buttons do. Basically, configuration file, this is in case you've already saved previous training settings. You can load them from here, and I will post a link to download the settings that I use. But if you're doing this for the first time, you're gonna come into here, and you're going to do the following. So your first checkbox here is the model that you're going to train on. It comes preloaded with Stable Diffusion 1.5, but you can choose any other model. Usually training on the Stable Diffusion 1.5 is the most basic model that you can use, and it doesn't give the best, best results. So I do recommend training on separate models. What model to use for your training is going to depend on the results that you want. What I've done is I've downloaded a model from Civit AI that has a little bit of styling to it already. I want that style to bleed a little bit into my LoRa. And the way you would choose a different model is you click on this icon over here. This is going to open a dialog box where I'm going to select the model that I want to choose. So I go into my Stable Diffusion folder. From there, I go into Models. I choose Stable Diffusion again. And here I have the folders that I've downloaded. This is the V1.5. I don't really remember what model I used to train my original LoRa, but in this case, I'm going to use Dream Shaper. This will auto-populate to custom. You could always come into here and choose one of these quick models. These are 
1.5 is the basic, 2, 2.1, 2 base, 2.1 base. I've, I haven't tried these yet. Dream Shaper is a model that was trained on the base of 1.5. If your model that you've downloaded happens to be trained on version 2.1 or above, then you would click here. And as for how you want to save it, go with safe tensors. That's fine because we're using automatic 11.11. Next tab, we go into folders. And here we're going to set up our folder structure. I recommend setting up a separate folder where you can keep the images that you want to train on. So in this case, I have a LoRa training images folder, and then I've created an iDesign underscore new folder because I already had one from the previous model that I trained. Inside this folder, you're going to need three separate folders, image, log, and model, and you just have to make those yourself. Now inside of the image folder, you're going to make another folder, and it's going to be called a number, underscore and a name. In this case, you'll see I have 100 underscore test, but you could have anything that you want there. The number in front of the name is going to be how many steps it uses per images. If you have around 15 images or more, you're going to use about 100 steps per image. If you have hundreds of images, you can get away with it just using 10 to 20 steps per image. In our case, I downloaded 65 images of EJ's characters, so I could probably get away with doing this with fewer steps, but I'm still going to set it to 100 in case you have fewer. And now I populate these folders into Koya. So copy this, put it in the image folder. Under I design new, my model folder is where I'm going to want my output to be. And my log goes from the logging folder. I don't need anything for this one up here because we're not going to use any of those. Model output name, this is what you want to call your LoRa. What I recommend is to give it a very intricate and strange name, usually getting rid of vowels so that it can't bleed into any other concept you already have trained inside Stable Diffusion. So for us, I call this iDesign for my other one, so I'm going to call this iDesign underscore new for me. Next, training parameters. This is where it gets complicated. Under LoRa type, you have a lot of different types of LoRas that you can use. I recommend just keeping standard. There are pluses and minuses to using any of the other ones, uh, but in this case, we're just gonna go with the standard. Train batch size depends on how much VRAM your card has. Usually you can get away, I have a 3090, so I set mine to two. What this does basically is that it processes two images at a time. You should try with two or three and see if it works for you, but if you have less than the 3090, then maybe consider keeping it at one. This will make your training take longer, but it will get done without errors. Epochs basically are how many times you're going to save your progress. So if I set, say, five epochs in here, what this is going to do is save five separate files as it's progressing with the training. This is great so that you can test at different points in the training if your LoRa got overbaked or not. For mixed and save precision, I kept it at FP16, but you can try BF16. I really don't know the difference. I don't touch most of these things, but the things that I do touch are the learning rate and the max resolution. So max resolution is set to 512 by 512, but we're going to set it to 768 by 768. All 1.5 models are trained on 512 resolution, but 768 gives you a little bit more space. For my learning rate for this one, I'm going to reduce it to half of what it's set up. And the tools tab is just for if you want to merge some LoRa's together and other things that we're not going to get into in this tutorial. So once you have everything set up, you could, go into, you could go into your advanced configuration. There's a lot of stuff to go into here. There's a lot of different things that you can try. Uh, like having clip skip set up to two instead of to one. Um, comes by default using Xformers, but you could also try turning some of these on and just running your own tests to see what works best. There are very good, really in-depth tutorials for Koya, which I will link in the description below. Uh, but just be warned, it's a big can of worms to get into. I mostly leave everything here by default. At the most, I would say if you have a low VRAM card that you come into here and you click gradient checkpointing and memory efficient attention. But for me, I'm going to keep them off. And that's all we need right now. What I am going to do is go into the configuration file and save a new one. I'll drop this here and call it iDesign. So now whenever I want to reuse these same settings, I just come in here and load that. There's still more steps we have to do before we can train our model. So we're going to come to utilities and we're going to and we're going to do some captioning. I used to only do blip captioning, but WD14 just came out apparently, and so I'm going to use that in this case. In here I'm going to paste the folder with my images. So copy that. Paste it here. I want a TXT file. I haven't used the undesired tags part, but I guess you could put anything you need in here. 
This has the different models that you can use for the captioning. In this case, I'm going to use the one by default. And you click Caption Images. In the command window, we can see that it's downloading the needed model, and then it will start captioning our images. And once we're done, it'll say Captioning Done down here, and we can go into our folder and check it. And now we see we have a text file next to each of our images. I didn't mention this before, but when you download images from the internet, they'll have all sorts of different names on them. So what you should do is select all your images and then click rename and choose whatever name you want. And it'll give it the same name and then uh, a number next to it so that you can keep everything organized. Let's open some of these and see how the captioning did. So the first one is this little Halloween pumpkin and the captioning said simple background, hat, food, Pokemon, creature, no humans, fruit, Glowing, top hat, apple, pumpkin, mushroom. Okay. This is a little carrot working out. Let's see what this said. Solo, simple background, full body, lying, black eyes, gradient, graded background, no humans, shadow, yellow background. The cactus. Solo, looking at viewer, smile, open mouth. So these, these aren't too great. I know that this type of captioning is new, and it is... Probably pretty good for style Lauras, but I don't really like what I got, so I'm going to do the blip captioning instead. I dragged in my old captions, and the thing that I do like about blip captioning is that it'll let you add a prefix to your caption. So in this case, I used iDesign without any vowels to make sure that it was a word that hadn't been used for anything before so that I don't get any concept bleeding. And here's some examples of the captions that got created. iDesign, a toy pumpkin with a face carved into it. I design a toy char char character with a blue headband doing exercise. I design a toy yellow cactus character with flowers blooming on his head. And you can start to see, if you look at this image and the caption that I ended up saving for it, I use the idea a toy character a lot with these images because you'll see all of these images are cartoon characters and very stylized. So I want to make sure that Stable Diffusion knows that I'm asking for something stylized like a toy. And then the trick with captions is to make sure that you're using terms that you want to be able to interchange later. What you're trying to teach the AI is the style itself and not anything specifically. So for example, if we look at this one, I design a toy boy character with blue eyes, blue hair, and a red cap. So I'm going into detail about what color the hair is and what color the cap is, because if I just called this in a cap, and then I asked my model to make me a cap, it's going to think that a cap is always a red cap. Instead, the more detail I give in the captioning, the more I can change those details later. So it doesn't think that all hair is blue hair if I just call it with hair. And there's a ton of really good in-depth videos that go into captioning and settings for LoRa's. We're in Automatic 11.11, ready to use our new LoRa's for Stable Diffusion. But before we can actually load them into Stable Diffusion, we need to activate an extension. So we come to Extensions, we load from Available, and it'll give you this list. And here you're just going to type Koya SS, or just Koya here, where it says Additional Networks. This is the one that you want to install. So you click install here. Since we're here, we're gonna to go to installed. We're gonna check for updates. There's new commits to control net, so I'm going to apply and restart. Technically, everything should work now, but whenever I install a new extension, I like to actually quit out of my stable diffusion and reload everything. Now that that's done, I can click on this image over here, which will show me additional networks. I click on LoRa and it says, there's nothing here right now. I need to put my models. I need to put my models into this address over here. We go back to our Koya folder structure and here under model, it has the models that it's trained. You'll see I have my final one, and then I have one check-in for every epoch. I had set five epochs to train, which meant that it saved a new progress model every 20%. This is the long one that took an hour and a half, and then I also have this one that took about half an hour. So the first thing I do is I bring my models into models, Laura, and this is where I wanna drop my models. First, I'm going to start with my final models. First, I'm going to start with my two final models, and then I'll test the, the epochs as well. Now that this is loaded, I can hit refresh, and you'll see I have both of them here, but I have no preview. And I'll show you how to save a preview later. So the first thing that we're going to do is set up our text to image. I don't want to use Euler. 
Since I trained it at 768, that's what I'm going to set this to. Leave my seed, maybe sampling steps to 25. Here, if you remember how we did our captioning, I'm going to set something very similar. So I'm going to start with a toy, strawberry character, and then I type in the style of, and this is where I choose my Laura. So we're going to start with this one. And you'll see that it adds these brackets in here. And it says Laura I design underscore new, which is the one that I created yesterday that took half an hour. And one is the weight of that Laura. That means how strong that Laura is going to be. That means how strong that Laura is going to be used. And we can change that, but I wouldn't recommend going over one. Okay, so I ran some tests and I clearly did not get what I expected to get. This is using the one that trained for almost two hours. And you can see that something is not quite right. We're not getting what we expect. This type of chromatic aberration and kind of like just general messiness that you see probably means that our Laura is overbaked. Let me run this with a lower, let's see if 0 0.6 on the strength of the Laura will have any difference, will make any difference on the generations that we get. Okay, so you see that bringing down the strength of the Laura did help a little bit. We are getting something a little bit better, but it's still not what we wanted. So obviously this Laura has been overbaked. That was 100 steps for five epochs. That's a lot for the 65 images that we had. So we're not going to use this model. Okay, so remember once we have this loaded, we want to be in Dream Booth Laura, not just Dream Booth. We're going to open our config file again. This is great that I saved it because it's really coming in handy. I'm having to come in a ton in here and change things. So the first thing that we're going to change, we're not using Dream Shaper. I'm going to click on here. It's going to, I'm going to use the cute rich 1.5 style to start. Double check my folders. The, this is linking me to the one that's at 30 steps. So I'm going to keep this one because a hundred steps was a little bit too much. And then in training parameters, I actually learned that I can bring my train batch up to five or six, and it works pretty well. And this also gave me overbaked results, so I'm gonna bring it back to one and see what happens. Everything else looks fine. I am just going to change this to CR for cute rich so that I know the difference between the models and hit train. So around here, I started having issues with my training. I just wasn't getting the results that I wanted. I'm going to show you a little bit of that so that you can identify any problems that you might be having in your training. And then after that, we're gonna go into the final settings that really did work, how I used that model, and how I generated multiple exports using ChatGPT and Stable Diffusion. The first concept I wanted to walk you through is overbaking. And I've mentioned this a little bit before. Here's some examples of what that looks like. When you start seeing this chromatic aberration in the images and everything just looking kind of nasty, you can tell that you've overbaked your model. The good news is that we did set up five epochs per training, which means that usually if your final one is starting to look like this, it means you just did too many generations. You can try some of the earlier epochs it saved to see if that one is less overbaked and might give you better results. Another way to deal with this problem is to not give the LoRa a weight of one, but every time you reduce the weight of the LoRa, keep in mind that some of the style from the checkpoint that you're using is going to bleed into the LoRa, and I'll show you some examples of that. Here are some more examples of failed training. You can see that the images that we're getting are not really within the EJ style. This is getting a little bit closer, but it's still not quite there. Not really what I was hoping to get. We have these weird dolls as well. I have no idea why this doll is holding a croissant shaped like something else, but I don't know. Stable diffusion, you're weird. Anyway, my main issue is that Koya wasn't recognizing my caption files, so let me teach you how to do that back in Dream with Laura for the training parameters, just to show you what my issue was with the captions. I'll come back to this and do all the final training parameters, but this was the main issue over here, the caption extension. It used to already be filled to .txt, but I guess in new versions, they're using the .caption. Anyway, my models weren't reading my text file captions, and that's why they weren't really training correctly. So make sure that when you're here, you set this to .txt, unless you are exporting your captions as .caption, which I haven't tried yet, so I, I can't speak for that. Back in Automatic 11.11, let me show you a few tricks about Lauras. So we click on the red icon to pull them up, as we do before. Now, I've been organizing my Lauras in folders inside my Explorer, and it's been very convenient to easily sort them. 
I can click through my different folders and have access to the LoRa's I need. So these are the ones that came out wrong. And one of the things with LoRa's, you can see they all have different names depending on the training parameters that I use. I try to keep it organized like that. But one of the things that you can do with LoRa's is you can click on this information, show metadata, and it'll come up with this, right? The great thing about this is that it'll tell you what model it was trained on, what resolution, what clip skip, everything. It gives you all the information here, right? But one of the things that we start to see here in these is that there's no captions. So this is what I was saying before, I wasn't reading my captions and therefore I didn't really know what to do with the information. It had no written concepts to marry to the visuals. But when I look at the ones that worked after adding the .txt extension to the captions, you can see that you'll see all your captions in here and the weight assigned to them. The great thing about this is that you can also explore other LoRa's that people have created and you have downloaded. So for example, I have a Stormtrooper LoRa here. Um, let's just generate to see how it works. But when you click on the information here, it's gonna tell me the model name that it was trained on, the size, the clip skip. Here's the example of the Stormtrooper LoRa. Obviously we're using Euler A and not very many sampling steps, so the quality isn't great, but hey, it's a Stormtrooper sitting on the floor. So when I went back and looked, I saw that this was the model that I used to train my original EJ LoRa. And so I'm gonna download this and train on this one again. Okay, final training, here we go. We're gonna use a config file because I've already set everything up and I'll find a way to make this downloadable for you. So everything populates in here. We're going to use that model that I told you. And basically the reason we use this model is so some of the training of that model will kind of bleed into our LoRa. We want to find something that's either stylized enough or close to the style that we're trying to get or realistic if that's what you're going for. Mixing it with another model that's already been trained just gives you a little extra oomph that I wouldn't know how to explain to you uh, that's gonna make our LoRa's a little bit better. So the folders are all set up correctly. We're gonna call this one final. Here's the trick to the training parameters. Basically, remember to set your caption extension to .txt. I've also figured out that on my 3090, I can have a train batch size of five and that will make training go faster. I've set my epochs to three now. You can set it to three or five, whatever you think is best. A little bit lower of a number will make it a little bit faster. Everything else pretty much remains the same. I've moved over to BF16 Mixed Precision. I think I explained during installation when you should use this or when you should use FP16. And the other thing that I figured out is that my scheduler works best when set to constant. There's other options in here and you should try them out and see what works best for you. For me, for now, constant has been the best and it's given me the best results. Everything else pretty much remains the same. Other than this, we're just gonna hit train model and then we'll have our LoRa. Back in automatic 11.11 now, we're going to do another trick to remember what prompts I use for my original LoRa's. We go to PNG info and here I'm gonna drag in one of the original images that I made. This is gonna give me all the information that I used to make this image. So I'm gonna send it to, te to text to image. And now everything in here comes populated, but this is my old LoRa, so I'm gonna get rid of that. In my current ones, the final is the one that I'm using. So this is how I set up to use my LoRa's. I design written in that weird way, which is my trigger ward for the style that I want, a toy bag of chips character in the style of, and then the name of the LoRa that I wanna use. And then I added smiling and walking just because that's what EJ's characters are usually doing. Let me generate this and see what comes out. These are the results after getting rid of the seed and setting my batch number to four. It's not truly the best. I think it's a little bit overbaked. Um, we can see a lot of multiple faces happening. So we can try to fix that with negative prompts. I added four eyes, two faces, deformed and low quality to our negative prompts. And these are the results that I got. It's a little bit better. This guy still has four eyes and two faces. This is making one of the potato chips a little character in itself and missing the eyes here. Overall, this one's just like bad. And other than the background, this one down here is coming out pretty cool. This is starting to look actually like EJ's designs. So what I'm going to do here without reducing it way too much, I tried reducing the strength of my LoRa to 0 0.8 to let my rev animated model fill in some of the blanks. And these are the results that we're getting. We're getting a little bit further away from EJ style, but we're actually now creating characters that, you know, especially this last one down here looks a little bit better. 
Okay, so this is how I used ChatGPT to help me generate different prompts for Stable Diffusion. I started by telling it I had a series of toy characters that needed inspiration on what would look good. And it gave me this long list of, you could do a popcorn bucket, a sushi roll, cupcake. A lot of these were actually really good. Um, so now I, told, I tell it, okay, I want to generate text to image AI image prompts using the ideas for characters you just gave me. Here's an example of a prompt. I give it this example. In this case, I was using an epoch of my iDesign model, uh, 002, and then I wanted to give it a weight of one. And so I ask it to give I ask it to give it one more example for each different character. And then I give it some rules for the generation. Not to use pronouns, avoid using these prepositions, start every prompt with the exact words, I design a toy, followed by the character type, then add character in the style of, which is what I use to activate the Laura, and then leave two empty lines at the end of each prompt. This is gonna help us set up our multiple prompts in Stable Diffusion. I had a little back and forth with ChatGPT until finally it gave me a list that I could use. Now, because the Laura that I'm using is a new one, I am going to ask it to generate the same thing, but with the weight of one using the new Laura that we created. Here we go. It gave me a few generations. It didn't come out with that, with the triangle brackets. I think that that is some code inside of ChatGPT that is making it turn it into these links that I can't really click. So I'm gonna to have to retype a little bit. Um, if anybody else knows how to make sure that it does give me those brackets, please mention it in the comments because I have no idea. But we can copy these, bring them into the prompt generator in Stable Diffusion and see what comes out. In Automatic 11.11, to make sure that we can use multiple prompts, what we're going to do is come down to scripts and, create, and click on prompts from file or text box. I'm gonna ask for a new seed for every line and then I'm going to paste this in here. And this is why I asked for two line breaks because I want them divided like this so that it'll read each one individually. Now I have to go in and fix the Laura styling. The other option that you could do is to create a text file for this and just drop it in here. And now we hit generate and let it run. One thing I forgot to bring up is once you have a lot of Lauras, it gets kind of confusing. And most of these are all for these for the tests that I've been doing. And when we go down to the final ones, I'm really only using a few. So I generated results with two different models and I'm gonna show you the differences. The first one I did was Rev Animated and it actually started giving me some interesting results. This is supposed to be sushi, um, cupcake. It's okay for these. Uh, the backgrounds are getting really busy. Then here I had these two options for the croissant. I wasn't really sure what was happening and why this, these didn't come out with the style. Turns out I forgot to add the brackets into, into my prompts, so that's why. Um, but then some of these are actually looking quite good. The, I like these watermelons. Bacon strip, really not my thing. I like how this, this one came out with a little like piggy nose almost. Pineapples. The, the only issue that I'm having with these generations are the backgrounds, honestly. But I totally know where this is coming from. If I take a look at the training images that I used, you'll see that especially these cat ones have these backgrounds that are fairly complex going on and geometric. And I think that's what it's picking up when it's creating these like wild backgrounds for me. These came out using the Rev animated model. And if I did want to use this model, then I would probably go back into my training images and remove some of those cat images because I did have a few different variations of the cat. So you can see I have like five different ones. So it's natural that the model actually thinks that the backgrounds should kind of be these like square weird. It doesn't really know what to do with it. Honestly, this tofu though, I don't know why the tofus always come out so cute. I don't get it, but they're adorable. Coffee cups, the eggs. So these are the ones, these are the ones that came out from the model Rev animated. And you can see that there is a big difference between this and the results that I got using the Dream Shaper model. Here's my little sushi roll. The Dream Shaper model is the one that I originally used when I first did my EJ Laura. These, some of these get a little bit weird. They're not perfect. For this one, for the Dream Shaper, I did raise my Laura strength back up to one because I wasn't getting so many issues with the background. One thing I forgot to mention was when you're dealing with a lot of Lauras, it starts to get confusing because you don't remember which one is which. So I'm gonna go to my current folder. These are the ones that I've been using the most. 
Uh, iDesign Final is the one that we've been seeing, and I do want to give it a preview because I want to be able to quickly see what type of images it generates. I'm going to go back to PNG Info and drag in my adorable little tofu, send a text to image. With Dream Shaper, I ended up using a weight of one, and now I'm going to generate a few different batches. Great, and here are the quick little generations we did. I kind of like this one, so I'm going to come down here and hit Replace Preview. And now I have a little preview here of what this Laura looks like. But do remember that this is what this Laura looks like under this Stable Diffusion checkpoint using Dream Shaper. When we use the other one, it looks a little bit different. And this is the thing with training Lauras. It's a whole process of back and forth, seeing what images you're using, making sure that the captions are correct, bringing that into Stable Diffusion, testing it, seeing at what weights it works best with what models, what other concepts you can kind of bleed through using different models. It's an interesting process and a lot of back and forth, and you have to enjoy that style of working to really get good at this. Um, but your other option is to just download Lauras that other people have trained and use those in your images. And there you have it. Here are a few of my favorite images that we generated creating the EJ Laura. Tofus were, will for always be my favorite. I don't really know what this green little thing is over here, but it's kind of cute. Yeah, they're just adorable little EJ style characters. So now you know how to train your own Lauras. You could use this to generate different styles, different particular characters. I'll probably do a separate tutorial on how to do character train Lauras and use inpainting to swap faces in your generations. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned and that you can put this to use. If you do, please tag me and let me know how it went. As always, if you have any questions or if any of this wasn't clear, please leave it in the comments. I'll do my best to try and explain everything and answer any questions. And that's it. See you next time.